what is going on my youtube familia welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video uh, i know it's been a minute it's been about a month since i uploaded my last video but uh during my last live video i had someone request uh for me to talk about gas and my gas issues now i thought it was a, a, a great video and great content for me to have um although i would say uh you know prior to getting into the video that my gas issues actually started after having surgery so any gas issues and bloating um it was you know right after uh having my first uh, in my own with the first GER surgery which was my knee symptom duplication surgery um you know at first i thought it was because of the the gas uh from the surgery right at the beginning uh the first couple of days after surgery i had a lot of left shoulder pain and a lot of pain in like my abdominal area uh, and that lasted actually for a couple of weeks, um, which, you know, I didn't expect to, but it, it did. And over time, it got a little bit better. Although I've read somewhere that there's like this nerve that connects from like your diaphragmatic area all the way to your shoulder area. And that is one of the reasons when there is like pressure in this area or there is some type of um, gas or a lot of uh, how would I say this? Just just bloating. Um, you feel pain over here. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, how how truth truthful that is. But I do remember reading that one time, and um, you know that that could be one of the reasons why. Also, I'm not sure if you know actual air makes its way all the way up to the shoulder and actually actually causes you pain. But um, you know that went away eventually and it got a little bit better over time for sure uh i would say though after surgery and after having procedures uh the gas and 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 the internal gas and the bloating um it, it's really 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 bad um that is something that uh, one of the side effects that has not left uh has not left me at all has not left my uh my body um, and to be honest, I'm not sure if he'll ever, ever leave. Uh, that is the, the sad part about it. Uh, and you know, as always, I like to be honest with you guys. I, I'm really, con I want to say I'm really concerned, but, it, uh, it's really like, uh, something that I wish I would have known, uh, before having the procedures, uh, or something that, you know, you, you kind of wish you had like a test run, uh, before you get the procedures, you know, like feel, you know, kind of, you want to feel the way. Uh, you would after surgery uh, to see if you can any way before actually having that procedure, if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, there is no way until, you know, you actually have, uh, you know, a procedure. So uh, at one point, I remember the gas being so bad that I started having pain in my appendix and that got really scary. I decided to call my insurance. Uh, my doctor, I should say, um, and at the time of the insurance, my, my provider was Kaiser Permanente. So I decided to call them and, you know, I was telling him that I was having pain in this area and, you know, they told me to come to, 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 to see the doctor right away. So I had an appointment that same day. Uh, I went and they did all uh, the testings and everything. And uh, it turns out that my appendix was inflamed. Uh, and it was, you know, around all my uh, lower intestines and, and my, 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 I should say my small intestines and my big intestine is actually, um, you know, a lot of gas. Uh, something that obviously I didn't have before the surgery. And, and I'm guessing that all of that bloating and all of, you know, the gas is causing, you know, it was causing my appendix to also uh, either be more sensitive, getting inflamed. Maybe there was some gas. Uh, that was stuck there who knows uh the weird part of, the weird part of, the weird part about it was that when i when i ate uh, when I, during my uh this was mostly during my um knee cell duplication i remember when i was eating like a, a heavy foods or a lot of fried foods um and, and anything that would just uh make my symptoms a little worse i will start having the pain right here and it was it, it it was right away by the way so it wasn't like I would eat and you know an hour later you know, I would start feeling that like pain and 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 that in this area in my appendix area and 
you know, it, it kind of felt like appendicitis. And, and the thing is, though, as soon as I ate, I'm talking about five, ten minutes, it will start like feeling that, that like that weird pain. And I'm like, oh, man, something's triggering it. Right. Something's happening. Um, and I knew or at least for the most part, I know that it was from having the um, the knee symphony duplication surgery uh, because prior to that, I didn't have any issues. My main issues were regurgitation and acid reflux. Um, uh, and of course, you know, I guess the, the heart racing and stuff was uh, on the side as well. But just regarding the um, stomach issues, you know, the GERD and the acid reflux was, uh, you know, my main issues. And I never had that in the past. Again, it was because of my surgeries. Now, once I got my links implanted two years later, um, which you know I still have now, the gas situation became less. Uh, and I also do want to mention that during my knee symphony duplication, I was not able to burp. I was not able to throw up. I was not able to burp. I one time went to I uh, one time went to a Atlanta United game, um, and I ate pork pork belly, which is a huge mistake. Um, and I wanted to, to throw up so bad. Um, and I went to the restroom and I was like dry heaving, like, you know, trying to throw up, trying to throw it up. I even like put my finger in my mouth to see the only way that I could throw up because I was feeling so nauseous. Uh, that lasted for about two to three hours until I got, I, I got home and it started taking Tums and stuff and, and to see if it would help. And eventually it, it did, but I suffered for those two or three hours, uh, and it sucked. Uh, also, you know, I wasn't able to really burp. Uh, when I ate, so all the gas from the foods, it would stay in my stomach and obviously go down the other way. Once I got my links, though, uh, gladly I, I am able to burp now. So, you know, if I'm feeling like I should burp, I'm able to burp. Within the first two or three months, I also found out that I was able to throw up the food. Um, and because it, uh, I was eating tacos one time and I, I guess I kind of ate them too fast uh, a couple weeks after the surgery. And... I it got stuck, you know, there was no way of going down. I tried drinking um, uh, hot water. I talked about this in my prior videos and uh, nothing helped. So, you know, I decided to put my fingers on my throat, which is, you know, not healthy at all. I do not recommend you doing it. But at that time, you know, there's there, there wouldn't be any more options. So I, you know, I threw up the food and I threw up, you know, the content that I had obviously in my stomach eating already. So uh, and I was able to throw up and that was, that's actually one that probably the only time that I've that I have thrown up other than that I take care of myself very well to the point where um, You know my body hasn't been wanting to to throw up the foods that I've been eating. So that's a good sign Now with the links my gas decreased um, uh, a lot but I'm still having issues internally uh, with all the gas uh, I, I pass a lot of gas and usually when I'm eating with my friends and family after 30 minutes to an hour, I want to pass gas. So if I'm eating like, you know, uh, a dinner out, out in, uh, in, in a restaurant, um, I have to pass gas, you know, within 30, 30 minutes to an hour. Now, sometimes, you know, it sucks because I do have to hold it, which makes me more full, you know, just out of respect for everybody. Uh, makes me more full and then you get full quicker and um, you, you start feeling that pressure you start feeling like it's hurting a little bit so you know the fact that I'm able to burp though kind of like clear some of that gas and stuff but regardless anytime I eat and this is anytime I eat and anything that I eat I have to pass gas uh, it sucks um, but you know it's something that you learn to, to live with um, this is why I always say people tell people, you know, to stick with people that are you really comfortable with and to really, you know, they understand your situation because, you know, there's times, you know, you have to pass gas. Obviously, you don't have to tell them every time you pass gas or, you know, you don't have to tell your family every time you pass gas, your friends you have pass gas. But, um, uh, you know, there's some times where, you know, it actually stinks and sometimes it actually doesn't. Very, very weird. And it doesn't matter what I eat. I haven't found any patterns on like if I eat this, it won't stink or if I eat that, it won't stink. Um, so, you know, that's one of the complications that I feel like, you know, I'm going to have to live with forever. Who knows? But, you know, after having, you know, after four years, after having my first, um, uh, knee symphony duplication surgery, uh, after my first GERD surgery, I should say, which was a knee symphony duplication, uh, you know, gas has been a major part of my life. And 
And if you want to know how much gas I have and stuff, actually, uh, after I had my lynx implant, I went to the doctor and I got an x-ray because I thought, you know, something was going on in that area. Maybe the lynx had my like broken or something. I got kind of, kind of scared and I went to do an x-ray and it turned out the lynx implant was okay. It was perfect. But the amount of gas that I had in my stomach, um, and also that I had in all my intestines was a lot. Like all the dark spots that you see, uh, from, from the picture, it, it's literally, that's gas. That's literally gas, and that's how much gas I had in my system. Uh, you know, probably at any given any given time. Uh, obviously, when I eat, probably more. Uh, I have more than that, uh, and maybe when I don't eat for a, a long period of time, then I have less. But regardless, you know, the gas is still there. Uh, hopefully, I can upload a picture uh, to YouTube um, so you guys can see it. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, the, uh, that's been my story with gas, you know, I uh, gas X and, and, you know, charcoal, I've tried some of that, but they don't really work as, as I wish, because imagine every time I ate, I'm telling you that every time I eat or consume any type of food in my stomach, uh, my body creates a lot of gas. Uh, you know, I, it feels bloated and, um, you know, if you take, that means that I would have to take gas X or I would have to take charcoal or something every single time that I eat and typically I'm eating around you know three times a day smaller meals of course uh and you know that would just be bad that'll be actually harming me more than it will actually be helping me so uh you know for right now I'm trying to take care of just my regurgitation issues and my acid reflux to try that you know try to get that you know completely cured somehow um but if anything I'll keep you guys updated I appreciate you guys you know watching my videos and this is all I have for you today with related to gas so I'll uh, take care. Um, also, join the live live sessions always. Uh, typically, I do them every uh, every weekend. So you know, stay uh, turn on the notifications. You know, turn on all the all the bells and stuff so you can get the notifications to your phone whenever I go live or whenever I up upload a video. So thank you guys. I appreciate it, man. And you know what? Peace and love, baby.